Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to be talking about file permission basics. Now, file permissions can sometimes get in the way of something you're trying to do. Maybe you don't have particular access to modify the file that you're trying to access, and maybe you just don't understand the file permissions. Um, I know. Uh, when I first started with web development and some systems, uh, people would say, oh, you just need to modify the file permissions to get this to work. And as a new user, that was confusing, right? Because you never really had to touch file permissions before. And there are a series of numbers, right? You may say like six, uh, 666 or 755 or 466 or people might say things like that. We're going to make this way less confusing and explain it in a way that you can understand. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to just uh, ls where I am just to see the files that in my current working directory. Now I'm going to go into uh, my sites folder then level up Okay, and let's go into our test folder that we created. Okay, I can actually hit Command K and I term, and I think it's that way in Terminal 2 to just clear it, but I'm gonna stay in the same spot that I was. Um, and from here, let's type ls space hyphen l. Now this is just going to give us a bit more information about this working directory. Now, what we see here is a whole bunch of information. You saw a little bit of this before in one of our other videos, but uh, what we're gonna focus on is this section, the very first things that show up here. Now, this might look a little funky. It's a bunch of, uh, you know, characters, um, but if you look a little bit closer, you'll notice there's some sort of pattern here. In fact, the first character, okay, it's a dash or a D, but then we have an RW, uh, and then it looks like it's a repeating pattern, right? So R, W, X, R, hyphen X, R, hyphen X, where these could maybe be replaced by a W, perhaps. And so what do these mean? Well, luckily, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty reasonable about their, their, like what these stand for, right? So what we have here is we have the hello.txt and the public directory. So the hyphen stands for a file, and D stands for directory. So we have a file here, and we have a directory. Now, next up, uh, we have uh, an R, W, and X. The R stands for read, the W stands for write, and the X stands for execute. So, uh, um, and we have it repeated three times. When there's a hyphen, uh, that means that that particular grouping does not have access to do that. So the reason why there's three of them is because we have three levels of access. We have the user, which is the first level of access. So for this directory, the user Scott, which is myself, can read, write, and execute this directory, okay? Now, next we have the group, and the group is the group of uh, users, and so every single user within the group of staff has access to write and execute this directory, or I'm sorry, read and execute this directory. They don't have access to write it, but since I, even though I'm a part of the group staff, uh, my user, Scott, has access here. Now, the last one is the global. So this is pretty much everyone else. Now, this everyone else has access to just read and just execute. Now, if we look at our file, I have access to read and write this file, but not execute it. I have access, our uh, staff, the group, has access to just read, and everyone has access to just read. Now, what does this really mean? In some, uh, in your web applications, right, you want some files to only be able to be read by the web server, right? And the server is going to maybe be in the group and that, uh, that server can read, write, and execute these files, but you don't want a user coming in off of the internet to be able to, uh, you know, access or, um, execute some files. 
So basically, you're not going to want to have read, write, and execute available for everyone on all your files. In fact, most files, you're not going to want to have them available to read, write, and execute on. Now, what happens with the numbers, right? So you may see in some applications uh, or people saying you want your permissions to be 777. So what does that mean? Well, if the user has access to read, write, and execute something, that is equal to 7. So if someone were to have permissions of 777, then the user, the group, and the world would be able to execute. Uh, they would be able to read, write, and execute. Now the other combinations are um, basically it's a, if it's a 6, that means that they can read and write. If it's a 5, that means they can read and execute. And if it's a 4, that means they can just read. So now if you see those permission numbers, uh, like a 644, that means the user can read and write and everybody else uh, can only read it. Now those are probably some of the more common ones like 644 or 755. In fact, if we go through uh, any sort of Magento um, or a lot of other content management systems or anything like that, pretty much any application, but uh, a lot of times you'll go into the the forums of Magento, and since people aren't familiar with file permissions, they're gonna be like, well, why is this working not like this? And then people ask, well, what are your permissions? And they say they're this, you know, they're all, uh, you know, 444. Okay, well, that's why, because nobody can read, execute, or write this stuff. And like some files, like PHP files, need to be executed by the server, and a uh, permission of only being able to read them is not going to allow that. Okay, so this is an introduction to file permissions. It's by no means like uh, the complete understanding of file permissions or anything, but if you haven't had a whole lot of experience modifying file permissions, this is a good place to start. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about how to modify file permissions. So we can actually change these to uh, uh, actually you know, 777555 without having to use another application, we can do it directly in terminal. So, as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tuts. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.